Welcome to the Self Storage Show, where I have conversations with my industry friends, talk with owners and vendors, and share tales about my management company, Three Mile Storage. Let's go. Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to the Self Storage Show. Hey, right at the top, I want to talk about something that's really valuable. You don't want to miss out on it. It's Three Mile Domination. What this is, is they optimize your Google business profiles, okay? And we all know for self storage, we live and die <laughs> by our rentals. And I guarantee you, if you don't have your profile optimized, you're losing out on rentals every single day. So go to 3miledomination.com. Right now, they are doing free audits of your profile. You'll see the big red button right there. You book your free audit right now. Book a time. We'll go through your uh, Google profile optimization session in real time together. Send you back reports. So you have an action plan. It's very valuable. Okay. So again, go to 3miledomination.com and book your audit right now. Hey, everyone. This is Jim Moss, The Self Storage Show. Got another episode coming at you here. I got my good buddy, Chris Bennett, with me. What's going on, Chris? Jim, how you doing, man? Good. I think you get good. the... Trying, I was trying to go through my Rolodex of you know, the recurring appearances, and I think you uh, get the punch card for like a free Subway sandwich or something like this by this point, so... Oh, that's hilarious for subway sandwich <laughs> something like that it's been three or four Good. episodes but uh, you always have great value and things to talk about so that's why i was glad you're willing to come back on man absolutely man glad to be here yeah well for those that you know maybe haven't listened to other episodes and want to get caught up give me a little uh cliff note version of who you are and what you do Sure. Uh, I lead the self storage team, uh, co lead the self storage team at passiveinvesting.com. We own about $130 million in self storage. We started really in 2021. Uh, so, in the last few years, we've uh, scooped up some deals, uh, both self storage and uh, one large boat and RV location uh, that's just boat and RV, nice class A uh, enclosed uh, facilities. So, um, yeah, we are looking for deals. Obviously, 2023 has been kind of tough, but uh, we're hoping 2024 looks a little bit better. Um, also co-host the uh, Storage Investor Nation podcast. So if anybody wants to check that out, they can do that as well. Um, uh, yeah, so that's a that's a high level overview. No, that's, you, you do a lot. So no, I've always I remember when you were first kind of getting going, like I want to do this, and they're doing it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. you know, yeah. Dude. Sometimes it takes a while. It's a little windy road. I like that meme that shows like you know how we think it looks, and it's like point A to point B straight line, but how it really is, and it's like the squiggle lines all over the place, and setbacks, and moving forward, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, absolutely. As long as you have momentum, you're kind of moving in the right direction. Doesn't matter. Yeah, how you get there, but <laughs> you're getting yeah, there. that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I guess kind of speaking of, you know, winding roads and all of that, like you kind of hit on it this last year and kind of what we're coming into is it's a windy road. <laughs> it's, it's quite not like what yeah, it's in a straight line. It's oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's been tough. So without like interest rate stability, like on the acquisition side. So I look for the deals, right. We talk to the, I talk to the brokers, build those relationships, talk to owners and uh, other people who might be wanting to sell. Um, so Yeah like 2021, 2020, 2022, you had some interest rate stability, you know, and that helps uh, pricing. Uh, but when they started raising rates, like about a year ago or so, uh, what year is this? 20? Yeah. So about a year ago or so, uh, it's August, or no, it's September, it's September, 2023, as of the recording of this episode. Um, so a little over a year ago, they started raising rates and um, went on a tear. Uh, and it made pricing stability kind of out of whack. And, you know, like, Sellers were selling deals at X and now the price is, has to come down, you know, at X minus whatever amount uh, yeah. because rates are up and it just kind of, we see a lot more uh, deals now that are, you know, price reduced, price reduced, which was unheard of uh, over a year ago. Like that never happened. It, stuff always sold for over list, uh, <laughs> over list price. Yeah, it's, yeah. it was crazy. Um, so, you know, that that's just where it is right now. Hopefully next year will look a little bit better. We'll see, but I don't think... Um, I don't think interest rates going to come down like quickly because why would they like that doesn't make any sense if we just like, you know, hike to slow inflation, if they lower again and business activity picks up, like why, what happened to inflation? It just, it, you know, it, why wouldn't it just come back? Um, so I think there needs to be some sort of economic shock uh, that causes the Fed to have to lower rates other than just some gradual, um, you know, lowering of rates over time and all that. So I don't, I don't it's not going to play out that way, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I know you're, I yeah. mean, you're, you're, you're looking at tons and tons of deals, obviously. And it's not like what it used to be making these things 
pencil out. <laughs> no, no. We look at like, so last I checked, whatever it was last week, uh, we looked at over a thousand deals this year and that's everything uh, from small stuff to big stuff. So small, like 20,000 square feet plus or minus or even smaller. And then uh, up to, you know, hundred thousand square feet plus. Um, so looking at everything, a uh, thousand ish deals, usually we can close a closing ratio is like roughly one to 2%, you know, something like that. Uh, and we haven't even barely made any offers. I think we made just a handful of offers this year so far. Uh, obviously, have closed only one deal, and that's because we put it under contract uh, around the fall winter of 2022. So we ended up closing that earlier this year in 2023, uh, and that's the only one we closed. Um, wow. So it's tough because there's different buyers, uh, and some of your listeners might be interested in this. There's different types of buyers out there. There's uh, buyers who are looking for cash flow, and they have to balance uh, a cash on cash return. You know, what's my return on equity if I'm investing in this deal? What am I going to get out of it uh, after I invest? And then others who are more patient, you know, they might look at development deals and wait longer, or they might buy stuff all cash right now and hope for better interest rates later in the future and put put debt on it uh, after sometime after closing. Um, if they believe in the asset class long term, maybe they pay all cash and hold it for 10, 20 years, 20, 10 years or more. Um, and uh, they're okay buying something that's uh, in an area where the cost to build is higher on a per foot basis than it costs to purchase the asset. So if it costs whatever, 150 bucks right now to build, including the cost of land in some market, maybe they can buy a deal at 120 uh, bucks a square foot. And uh, they're comfortable with that, even though it might be only in lease up or just see a vote or whatever, you know, and they're not making money day one. Uh, but they're willing to hold for the long term. So, so right now the cash buyers, it's uh, excuse me, the um, uh, the yield buyers are. It's just tough because rates are high, pricing has to come down a bit further, so it slows acquisitions down for all of us. Um, and then some of those who are basis or replacement cost buyers, they they're willing to um, take a hit in the first year or two. So, um, because they're going to hold it for the long term. So yeah, there's different different buckets, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I get it. I'm I'm curious though, as you're looking at some of these deals, because again, I'm not on this side of things. I'm not the I'm not the investor. I'm not an owner. I'm just the hired gun for management. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's why I have these conversations because I'm I'm kind of learning, you know, as I go here. A thousand a thousand deals. I it's it's a numbers mm -hmm. game. It totally. It's an it. absolute numbers game. That's all it is. So like, if you know anybody is trying to get clients for whatever the heck it is, well, you know, how many does it take me to get one? How many do I have to talk to to get one? Uh, or get 10 people interested and then for one of them to buy, you know, whatever it is. It's just like sales. I used to sell back in the day when I was younger, I sold cell phones. Like how many people do I need to talk to, to to get them interested to maybe give me a call or come back in the store or whatever the thing is, the metric is. And then how many of those people actually end up buying or wait till later, you know, it's just a numbers game. So if you increase the top end of your funnel, uh, ideally in a, you know, ideal world, you'll close a certain percentage uh, of those customers or or clients or whatever. So in our case, we look at deals and we get broker deals, we get some off market stuff and put all that together, put it in the hopper, right? Put it in the funnel. Uh, yeah. At the top end of the funnel, you underwrite some, you look at some and some of the markets just don't work. So you don't even waste your time. Um, and then others like the, you know, the, whatever your buy box is, it's in the right markets, the right size, you underwrite it and the pricing's too high or whatever the problem is, or the debt is too expensive for the price they want, you know, that kind of stuff. So that doesn't work. And then you get some that do work, you make an offer, then you win some of those. And they say yes, and you go under contract and you close. Uh, so yeah, it's just really just a numbers game is all it is. So the more deals you can look at in your pipeline, the uh, higher the chances are that you'll close whatever number of deals you need to close. So yeah. All sales. It's all sales. And that's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah, that's all it is. So, so, so if somebody runs a property management company like yourself, it's like, how many people do I need to talk to uh, to get in front of? How many owners do I need to get in front of in order to get them to give me a call or reach out or whatever it is to use my services? And then after I talk to them, how many of them actually end up using me? What's that ratio uh, from people uh, who uh, know about me and then people who actually close? Same thing with tenants coming in or customers coming into the facility or calling the facility to rent a unit. What's the ratio there, you know, and you're always trying to increase that closing ratio. True. I'm curious when you, cause you're obviously talking with uh, brokers or then they're of course dealing with the owners. Yeah. These owners are just been, you know, of course, last couple of years, it's like, holy crap, name your price. <laughs> and they're, and they're yeah. selling, obviously, and that's long gone now that, that, that's history. Are they, yeah, are these owners just kind of being like, not willing to lower it down because they were used to what they were selling for before. I'm just 
So uh, I think some of that's kind of worked its way out of the market because we're kind of in a new normal now when back, yeah, a few months ago or a year ago or whatever. Yes, uh, that was the case. I remember in 2022, like summer and fall and winter, it was hard to uh, say, guys, this doesn't even make any sense, you know, with, with, with the way things are going. So I think owners are becoming more realistic. That's why we've seen those emails come out saying, you know, price reduced, you know, all that stuff. So their owners are saying, okay, I have to kind of meet the market where it is. Um, uh, yeah, so that that's happening. Uh, I think going forward, you'll see owners who are wanting to bring their deals to market. They're not going to get the price they wanted back, you know, in 2021, 2022, but uh, they're willing to accept that because they have to work through some issue, whether it be like an interest rate issue or like a debt issue on their end or a partnership issue or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, they're willing to kind of work with that and in, in our understanding of where the market is. But dealers still getting sold. Like I've seen the smaller stuff. So under, you know, roughly 30 to 40,000 square feet. So like really like a mom and pop, more of a mom and pop owned type deal. Uh, those are coming out with like maybe a year one, like pro forma seven cap, you know, capitalization rate or cap rate. Whereas before that was pretty much unheard of, you know? Um, so I've seen the, in other words, the pricing is coming down on, on deals that are getting listed today. Um, on the institutional stuff, the large stuff, we looked at yeah. one that was in a great market uh, out in the Midwest and, um, uh, growing market, et cetera. Uh, that was like a nice class a, I, I don't know how many square feet I forgot, like 70,000 call it square feet, multi-story deal, really nice deal. Uh, that one, it was like partially leased up, maybe 20, 30% occupied, something like that. Uh, but they wanted a certain number for it, which made it about a one less than a two cap on that oh deal. And so how do you make money on that? Like you have to pay all cash for it. If yeah. you pay all cash for it, you're literally making a one to 2% return based upon a pro forma from the broker, right? So meaning like, it doesn't matter if it's our pro forma, the broker's pro forma, pro forma, it's probably not going to perform that way exactly. That's highly unlikely, but you take your best guess, your best shot at it. But the point is, is that your, your returns are very low. If you pay all cash, I could take the same money and put it and buy, you know, treasury bonds or whatever and make more uh, and sell it at some point in the future and, and put that back into real estate if I wanted to. So there has to be a compelling story there. And then, like I mentioned earlier, like that buyer who's going to accept that price um, and pay that price is likely going to be in this for the long term. They likely have a longer term bet on self-storage. And obviously on that particular asset class, and they can say, okay, we still feel comfortable with it. We're going to hold it for five to 10 years. And we might sell it later on or refinance it or whatever, most likely, or put debt on it later uh, when rates level out when it or when it leases up and stabilizes at a certain uh, occupancy and rent level, we feel comfortable at that point and we can refinance it at that time. So um, anyway, so that's, that's, you know, that's the play there. You have to have a uh, high level of conviction in the asset class to buy or pay something uh, like that for that deal. Know what you are doing, bottom line. Yeah. 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 You mentioned pro formas. I, I need to do a whole episode just on pro formas. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's some, what I've, I've seen some like, what are you been smoking? Like, no, <laughs> Crazy. Yes, I th I think uh, it does get kind of aggressive. You know, they can get aggressive on rental rate increases in GPR, gross potential revenue. Uh, you know, if you raise all rents, whatever, 50 cents or whatever, whatever the number is, 20% or whatever, that's fine. But like, what are you actually collecting to pay your bills? Like, that's more important. So you can raise GPR all, all day long, right? My top level rents, yeah. but actually, what am I collecting? And that's even more important. And I think people kind of overlook that. And sometimes in the pro forma, you see, GPR going up and somehow effective rates going up, meaning everything that's left over, my effective revenue that's coming in is going up as well. And somehow occupancy is going up, like everything is going up. And, yeah. you know, that doesn't always pan out that way. Um, so, and also like if you, sometimes if you underwrote things like, you got to have a little bit of optimism, right? And you have to have a little conviction in the deal uh, because if you, if you underwrote things the way that they're supposed to be or the way that the textbook tells you to do, if you went to school and all that stuff, like I read a book on it and, oh, you should buy it to make money on the front end. Yeah, but that is not the world we live in, you know, for the most part, especially in self-storage. Like most owners want you to pay and you go do some work also uh, to get there. So, which that's kind of the way that it is. Not always. You can mm -hmm. find good deals that are, you know, day one, we had, we did that day one, it was a seven cap, like day one, the day we closed, the, yeah. the income was a seven cap, which that's like a needle in a haystack of giant haystacks. I don't, I don't know. Like you don't find that. And that was like two years ago that we found that deal. So like it can happen, but it's extremely rare. You know, most deals today that are listed or that 
the seller wants to sell, like they, they want you to pay a higher number than it really, really makes sense on the front end, you know, yeah. but if you can do some work and get here, then it does make sense. So uh, I think people have to be kind of realistic about that too. Well, good. Well, this has been, again, I love having you on for selfish reasons. It's because I, I learned something every single time, but it's nice to have a good, you know, a little uh, heat check on the market on what's going yeah. on the latest and greatest. So, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. As we're wrapping up here, want to plug, you know, passiveinvesting.com or anything you want to talk about real quick? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Check out passiveinvesting.com. You can join our passive investor uh, list uh, club. Uh, VIP club, you'll have access to deals as they come out. We don't do just do storage. We do sell uh, multifamily and car wash as well. Um, and then if you want to follow me uh, for storage investing stuff, I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, I think you'll have a link there in the uh -oh. description or whatever, but they can follow that and, and it'll take them to all the, uh, all the places where they can connect with me. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks again, Chris. We'll talk to cool. you later. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Before we wrap up, just a quick reminder. If you want to level up your storage game, visit theselfstorageshow.com. Grab some high value freebies, check out top vendor spotlights, and stay in the loop with our newsletter. Do you want to chat about becoming a client with Three Mile Storage Management? All the info's there. Plus, if you've got a story to share, we're listening. Everything you need is at theselfstorageshow.com.